it actually comes out or it can come out just the opposite and more wealth is, is created. So Lane, those are fighting words for some people. You just, yeah. you just drew the, the proverbial red, red line in the sand. I'm excited to have Don Graves here with us today for an interview. I first met Don, um, I believe it was 2014. I was attending the, I was going through the RICP program at the, to the American College. And Don was, uh, they brought in as a specialist, as an adjunct professor on the subject of reverse mortgages. And so Don is an, in, an incredibly uh, a smart guy, and he knows knows a lot on the subject of reverse mortgages. And so, Don, welcome. Very happy to have you. Thank you, Lane. Thank you, sir. It's good to be with you. Yeah. So I know there's a, 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 a just a lot of misunderstandings around reverse mortgages and, and the various strategies that are available. What Give us kind of a, a basic definition of a reverse mortgage. Sure. Yeah, have you ever mentioned a reverse mortgage at the barbecue? I mean, what happened? Three people left the table. Three people went under the table, and your Aunt Janie made a shank out of a plastic knife and fork and tried to kill you. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's reverse mortgage is a mixed company. I'm coming into my 25th year of helping retirees access their housing wealth to strengthen retirement outcomes. So what is a reverse mortgage? First of all, it's a nickname. It's a nickname. And the legal name is called the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. It's a federally insured loan for retirees age 62 or better that allows them to convert a portion of their home's value into tax-free dollars that doesn't require them leaving the home or making a payment of any kind. But Lane, you know what it is? It's four letters. If you're watching, I want you to write down the letters I-J-A-M. Folks, it's just a mortgage. It's just a mortgage. 1988 started um, under the federal government, the seating of the 100th Congress, the signing of our 45th president, or 40th president, Ronald Reagan. And so the home equity conversion mortgage is just a mortgage for retirees. It's not new, it's not spooky, and it's not dangerous. Yeah. Well, it's, and, and there's a, a surprising number of strategies that can be used that we're going to get into a little bit of that. Um, but what are what are the basic qualifications for someone to apply? So three primary qualifications. Well, may, may, um, it's got to be um, someone's got to be age sixty two or better to get it. Now, yeah. most states only one spouse has to be age sixty two; the other has to be eighteen or older. Texas requires both to be age sixty two. So the qualifications: um, age has got to be your primary residence um, and the place that you residing in typically six months and a day. And there's some basic income or credit qualifications to make sure that you're able to meet your um, basic living requirements. So those are your three um, kind of primary qualifications, your age, your property residence, and some very basic financial qualifications. Yeah. So what are some of the misconceptions? I know there's a lot. Um, what are some of the top misconceptions of a reverse mortgage? And, and certainly when I talk a little later, I'll, I'll reemphasize those. But the biggest one is that um, the bank owns the home and or you can lose your home. You can be kicked out of your home. A lot of times I hear it this way. Oh, that's that loan where the bank loaned you the money. And when you died, they took the house. And I'd say to people, you remember our four special letters, I-J-A-L. It's just the mortgage. That's not any mortgage you've heard of. I said, no, it's a mortgage. The bank loaned you the money. And they place a um, a lien on the property to secure the mortgage. And then when you die or move or go into some sort of facility, then the loan becomes due and payable. And so at that time, the children typically, now I'm in my 25th year, I've helped, had 16,000 conversations and 3,000 clients. So I've had a lot of people um, transition. That's a modern word for die. I'm from Kentucky, so die. <laughs> and um, 98% of the time, the children so the home pay off what's owed, and they split whatever's left over. That's how a reverse mortgage works. Right. Okay. I know there's a line of credit that uh, people don't understand. It's, it's non-recourse nature. So so once we won't we get into some of the modern strategies that are being used? Sure. And um, I'm going to share my screen. But before I do that, Elaine, you and I have had the pleasure of knowing one another, and I've helped your clients and my team has been helpful to you. 
why are reverse mortgages important to you? Um, given there's some bias, there's some misconception, there's some negativity around them. And number one, how'd you come to learn about it? And, and why is it important to you and your practice? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, we pride ourselves on being holistic planners. In holistic meaning, we really want to look at the whole picture, all the assets, including housing wealth, including taxes, including uh, really a, a very large number of variables that go into retirement planning. And we want to create efficiencies and we want uh, retire retirees for their income to last longer. And the, the Heckam reverse mortgage is really kind of a, I think of it as like a secret weapon, right? It's, uh, it's something a lot of people, they, they don't understand and they don't realize what they can do. They don't realize they can actually reduce their taxes. They don't realize they can actually increase their social security benefits, yeah. you know, with certain strategies. They can have more income in retirement and peace of mind and actually leave a larger legacy. You know, a lot of times people will think, well, if I do reverse mortgage, that means my kids won't get as much out of the value of our house. And when you look at the whole picture, it actually comes out or it can come out just the opposite and more wealth is, is created. So, so, so yeah, so we can't, I, I always say we, you cannot consider yourself a true holistic financial planner if you ignore housing well. Lane, those are fighting words for some people. You just, yeah. You're just true that the proverbial red line in the sand, right? But I, I believe you. And that's why today I'm going to be sharing something with your audience that I normally wouldn't share, uh, which is a, a mini webinar. And that's because I, I teach at the American College and uh, most of my uh, material you have to pay for, I'm doing it for financial advisors. Let me clean my glasses. But I want to share with your folks um, really some things that are very important for those that are listening, that they can share this, um, not only with their friends and family and clients and clear some misconceptions, but I hope for the listener that you understand that Lane and his group, in my opinion, are some of the finest holistic planners in the country. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to turn to my video, and let me let me start here. So today I'm going to talk about 14 ways to mitigate premature erosion with a Heckam line of credit. Now that's a big that's a big word, folks. That just means running out of money sooner than what you wanted. I'm in my 24th year of um, doing reverse mortgages. I've talked to a lot of people, and I've heard a lot of things. And one thing you realize that I understand is that this resource is not always an appropriate tool for everybody. I've got some credentials on the screen. I've written a few books, finishing my third, but I'm very practical. I'm a pracademic. I tell folks, listen, there's often more than one right answer to a question. Now, the real brainiacs, those AP kids in high school would say, that's not true. I said, it is. See, I asked my granddaughter, four years old, I said, where does milk come from? And she told me the refrigerator. That's right. That's <laughs> true. And her older sister Jumped in, seven years old. She said, that's not true. I said, well, what's true? She said, comes from the store. So <laughs> true. Neither one of them told me about some bovine masticating creature with four stomach compartments, small and large intestine mixed with blood, urine, and bacteria that comes out through the jigglies. <laughs> None of them said that. None of them said that. But they all had the right answer. And so when we're talking about using our home's equity to strengthen retirement outcomes, this conversation that you're watching may not be for you. You may want to stop the video and you heard reverse mortgages or you threw it, you saw it in the title. So let me ask you a few questions. And then at the end of these questions, you can say, yes, this is for me. No, I'm just going to shut this video down. Can I share 10 quick questions with you? If you're a listener, I want you to Grab a pen or paper. And when I ask these questions, either write yes or no or not applicable, which is the same as no. Here are the questions for you. If your home could be used to increase your cash flow in retirement, would you want to see how it works? Yes or no? If eliminating a monthly loan payment meant your retirement savings could last significantly longer. Would you want to see how it works? Yes 
No, or not applicable. If you had a monthly mortgage payment and you had the option of having it mandatory or voluntary, and if we could show you how to make it voluntary, would you want to see how that works? If we could use your home to create a backup plan for market risk and volatility, would you want to see how that works? If your home could be turned into a reserve fund that was growing tax-free at 68% and could potentially surpass a million dollars, would you want to see more? I'm going to lump these last ones all together, and so you could just say yes or no. If we could use your home, well, let me go back one, to minimize the income taxes you pay in retirement, to leave a larger inheritance to your heir, to defer Social Security for a higher benefit payout later, to replace income in case of loss of emerg or emergency, to create a long-term care health plan, to limit your savings withdrawal so your growth is optimized. Listen, if we could use your home to do any of those things, would you want to see how it works? Now, you're watching this. I just asked you 11 to 12 questions. If you wrote down no to everything, then there's an exit coming up. I want you to jump off, tell your friends about it. But you jump off. This probably is not going to be for you. But if any of those 12 questions or 11 questions, you said yes, and oh, yes again, <laughs> then these next few moments, I won't cover them all, but I'll tell you where they all can be covered. But I want to cover a few of them. A few years ago, Yahoo Finance I had an online article that said 14 key signs you'll run out of money and retirement. The number one concern of retirees. Will I run out of money in retirement? And, you know, that's because retirement is different. At the, and I love this picture, by the way. Oh, my gosh. The face of the baby boomers. <laughs> Lane, I asked a group one time, uh, young advisors, and I said, does anyone know who this is? And fellow in the front said, yeah, man, that's Journey. And his buddy <laughs> said, no, that, that's Aerosmith. I said, wrong. These are the strolling bones, <laughs> the rolling stones. They've gotten really old in our lifetime, but retirement is different. First half of retirement, uh, we're climbing the mountain, we're allocating assets, we're uh, managing risks, and we get to the top of the mountain, take our stance. Now we've got to come down. That's where the danger lies, and that's what we're talking about. So we need all the tools available to make sure that we can land safely at the bottom. But the risk in retirement are real as well, aren't they? A lot of people thought the ride would be kind of smooth, slightly uphill, but um, it ended up being peaks and valleys and hills and dangers and a pandemic. No one knew how to spell pandemic. Inflation that <laughs> went up 8, 9, 10%. Now, we hadn't seen that since Jimmy Carter. And it was just a tough journey to get to the end of retirement. Some of the concerns that my clients had, and again, folks, this is a this is my mini workshop only. I've only done this, I think, once in my lifetime for an advisor. That's for late to be shared publicly, but he means that much to me. The five concerns I talk to retirees about are longevity, lifestyle, liquidity, legacy, and long-term care. Longevity, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much does the thought of running out of savings trouble you? One, I'm not bothered at all, Don. Ten, oh, I can't sleep at night. Lifestyle. How bothered would you be if you had to cut back your lifestyle, places you want to go, things you want to do, where you want to live? Well, how bothered would you be if you had to cut back your lifestyle in order to make your savings last? One, I wouldn't be bothered. Ten, I would cry every night. Liquidity, having access to tax advantage money when you need it. Had a client, had some emergency dental work this week, $14,000, not covered. Worth a hearing aid, $7,000. A tree fell, the insurance company... Um, took the tree off the house, but wouldn't remove the tree um, from the yard. $14,000. Folks, things happen in retirement, right? And that old commercial says, life comes at you fast. So if you had to access ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 from a source that you didn't have to pay taxes on, how prepared are you to do that? One, on a scale of one to 10, I, Don, I've got that in my mattress right now. 10, I'm not very prepared at all. Legacy, how will I be financially remembered? On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is it for you to leave a legacy, financial legacy, to your children? One, 
Don, they'll be okay. Ten, I'll move out of my house, go to Skid Row, eat cat food in order to leave them something. And finally, LT, long-term care, often the biggest underplanned for and underfunded expense in retirement. Mm-hmm. How prepared are you? If you had to access another two, three, four hundred thousand dollars for long term or just health care and retirement, one, well, I'm entirely prepared for that. Ten, I'm not prepared at all for that. You see, when we begin to ask these questions, they all have a number seven and five, six and two and eight. These are the risks that happen in retirement. So retirement is different and the risks are real, folks. The risks are real. But what are the resources we have? Most of us have the, we've got income, employment, Social Security, pension, maybe if we're lucky, investments, 401k, IRAs, brokerage accounts, and insurance. It's fixed and variable annuities, whole and term life insurance, long-term care. But we also have 87% of the people watching this have a home that they own. You have your housing. And we've used our homes before. 30-year mortgages, home equity loans, lines of credit, but reverse mortgages come within the pantheon of housing wealth. It is an age-appropriate equity release strategy for retirees that we're talking about today. So when Lane and his team are planning for your retirement, they want to use all of your available assets, your income, your investment, your insurance is in your housing wealth. Here's a question. Should anything be excluded? See, some of you have been watching those TV folks and they don't like annuities or they don't like life insurance. But if I ask you, would you want us to ex- exclude them as we're planning for a lifetime income for you? No, 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 don't exclude it. No, of course you wouldn't. So reverse mortgages are part of the pantheon. I want to cover a few basics. IGEN, remember I covered that earlier. What is a reverse mortgage? Folks, it's just a mortgage. It's a non-recourse loan for those age 62 or better, though there are some programs for higher home values for age 55 plus. In certain states, typically home values about $1.5 million or more, um, you'll get more money there. It allows you to convert a portion of your home's value and turn it into tax-free dollars, income, without having to make monthly payments. You do not give up ownership or come off title, and you'll never be required to repay more than the home is worth. You can have the money as a lump sum and a line of credit, monthly payments, 10-year payments for as long as you are in the home and have the loan term payments. Not only needed for five year, 10 years, or a combination thereof. Now, what are the borrower's responsibilities? I want you all to uh, pay close attention because here's the story, Lane, that people hear. They say, you know, Don, I was over um, at my at my, um, my cousin Tracy's house, and my Uncle Junebug came out of her spare bedroom, and everybody said, Why are you? What, what's why are you living in Tracy's spare bedroom? And here was uh, here's what Uncle Junebug said. He says, Oh, I got that reverse mortgage, and I lost my house. And Lane, everybody at the barbecue said this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew it. I knew those things were terrible. And you know what happened? That was on a Saturday. Sunday, a few people went over to the Baptist church before service and said, um, Pastor, we've got we've to tell the congregation um, about this. And then Monday, someone was at Rotary, and Tuesday at the beauty salon, and Wednesday at the barbershop. And by the end of the week, Everybody knew someone who knew someone who heard about someone whose uncle had a reverse mortgage and lost his house. And that's <laughs> how it starts, right? Yeah. And so you mentioned reverse mortgages, and everybody's got some horror story. And then they come to me in Lane, and they say, what do you say about that? And you know what I say? I say it's true. It's 100% true. Uncle Juba got a reverse mortgage, and he lost his house. Oh, Don, you're taking old people's house. Shame on you. need to go repent. <laughs> I said, well, uh, Uncle Junebug didn't tell the whole story. See, there are four requirements when you get a reverse mortgage. You or your spouse, someone's got to live in the property as their primary residence. Number two, you've got to take care of it, maintain the property. Number three, you've got to pay your property taxes. Number four, you've got to keep insurance in force. Now, what Uncle Junebug didn't tell everybody was that he hadn't paid his property taxes in four years. Now, I don't know where you're from. You're listening to this. But I'm pretty sure if you're somewhere in the United States, if you don't pay your property taxes for four years, the municipality is going to have something to say about it, either a share sale or tax lien sale. And so Uncle Junebug told the partial truth, but here's the total truth. 
Now, none of these are spooky, are they? You're already doing this. If you're a retiree, you're living in the house, you're taking care of it, you're paying your taxes, and you keep an insurance in force. Listen, don't stop. Now, I want you to grab a pen and paper. You already had a pen and paper, and I want you to draw a triangle like this if you're watching me. The question is, well, Don, you said I get a portion, a portion of my home's value. How do you determine the portion? Well, first of all, it's not me personally. It's the Federal Housing Administration, because this is a program sponsored by the United States government. So they determine. Well, how do they determine the portion? Well, they look at three things. If you're drawing, you're watching here. Number one, we look at the age of the youngest borrower. Write that at the top of your triangle, age. Age. The older you are, the more money you can get. Why? Because conceivably, if you're 96 or versus 66, the 96-year-old may not have the money as long, so we can loan them more. Number two, it's based off the value of the home. And number three, it's based off of the projected long-term interest rate. That's called the expected interest rate. Now, those figures go off into a formula, and then we get a number back, and we're going to put that number in the middle of the triangle. And I'm going to call that the NBA, the net benefit amount. The NBA, that's how much money after closing costs or reverse mortgage is going to make available to you. Now, a reverse mortgage must be a first mortgage. So any existing mortgages have to be paid off. And then what remains is called a line of credit. Matter of fact, I want you to write down four more words. If you're listening, GLOC. Did you all write that down? GLOC. Don, what does that stand for? That stands for growing line of credit. Growing line of credit. Now, remember my family's from Kentucky. They tend to want to put a K on there, make it some sort of weapon. I tell them, well, it's a weapon. It's a, a type of weapon, Lane. So I said, this Glock, you can um, tear in the Piggly Wiggly. I think you can carry the other one, too, in the Piggly Wiggly down in Kentucky. But we're going to talk about this growing line of credit. That's what we're focused on here today. And so the loan gets repaid. Remember, it's just a mortgage. Keep Remember that. When do you pay your mortgage? You pay your mortgage when you move or die. So when does a reverse mortgage get repaid? It gets repaid when the last surviving borrower permanently departs the home. At, uh, that is, they move, they die, they go into a facility for mental, physical incapacity for 365 consecutive days. At that time, whatever proceeds were advanced to you plus accrued interest gets repaid. Watch this, folks. 100% of any remaining equity passes on to the heirs of the estate. And with extensions, you have up to one year to pay it back to pay it back. That means if you had a house over here and you got your house, your house was $600,000 and 20 years down the road, I'll draw this here, it's worth $1.2 million, right? Remember, you bought it for 200000 You never thought it would ever get to six hundred. So houses appreciate. Double in value every 20 years. You're going to get a reverse mortgage and you're going to spend some money. I don't know how much you're going to spend. Whatever you spend is going to accrue interest. So down the road, you've got a $1.2 million home. And let's say you've got a $400,000 reverse mortgage loan balance. You see that? Let me change colors here. So that means, Don, I've got a $1.2 million home and $400,000 owed. My children sold the house. Yeah. And $1.2 minus $400,000 means that $800,000 was left over. After that happened, Don, what if the house is worth less than less money? What if we owe more than less money, right? Two things we don't know. I don't know how much you're going to spend. I don't know how much your house is going to worth. One thing I do know, somewhere at the end of the journey, your house is going to be worth something. You're going to owe something, and you get a statement every month, so that won't be a mystery. And whatever is the difference is, passes on to your heirs or your estate. Now, for nevers, for nevers, when you get a reverse mortgage, you never come off title. You'll never owe more than the home's value in the end. You never have to leave the home if you went over to the Riverboat Casino with Lane and his family and spent all your money. And you'll never have to make loan repayments in advance of leaving the home. Those are your four nevers. Now, I wanted to do that just by way of review because some of you all don't know me. Um, my full teaching on this, Lane, is housingwealthmasterclass.com. You all jot that down. Housing Wealth, let me try to type in it. Housing Wealth Masterclass, M A S T E R, class.com. There we go. So if you're watching, you say, Don, I'd like the full, I want the full teaching. I don't want the, the abridged version. We're going over there. 
going over there, and I'll, I'll give you, you'll get it all. I won't hold anything back. But today I want to talk about the power of this line of credit, the power of this line of credit, because this is the foundation of everything. Once you understand this, there are 52 strategies I teach. I teach a six-hour course at the American College, so we won't get it all in in this time, but you're going to get a lot of the, you're going to get the foundation on which everything is built. 14 key signs that you're going to run out of money. So what were they in this article in Yahoo? You didn't have long-term care. You didn't have a long-term care plan. Listen, my mom was 91. At 85, she began to spend $7,000 per month. Part-time for home care. My one sister retired early, quit her job to help my other sister, reduced her hours. And three years later, 36 months, we'd spent a quarter million dollars. Mama ran out of money. And so we moved her to a long-term care plan. And so a risk, you don't have long-term care. You estimate your life expectancy. I said, Mama's 91, Daddy's 94, Aunt Ethel just died at 102. So do you have enough money to last you as long as you do? If you don't, you're going to run out of money. You didn't plan for health care costs. You didn't take inflation into consideration. Now, during the, um, the COVID years, inflation was 2%, and all of a sudden, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I asked a friend of mine, Lane, Dr. Wade Fa, I said, wait, my inflation wasn't 10%. My haircut used to be $10, and now it's 16 I said, that's 60%. I said, gas was this, and the steak was this, and I went to Whole Foods and get a ribeye, and I called my wife and said, did the cows go on strike? What did I miss? And uh, But your personal inflation rate, P-I-R, the inflation that you've experienced the last few years, has been very impactful. And if that continues, that means uh, the cost of your donut <laughs> it's not, that's going to be way different. Listen, and Elaine, am I free to talk? Can I talk a little bit here? You tell me. Yeah, absolutely. Love your thoughts. All right. See, the, the, this inflation thing, my wife came home last night and she was hot mad. Uh, we watched two grandchildren and she said, my daughter went to Subway and she said, Don, the sandwich was $18. I said, There's, what, what was that? She said, no, that's a foot long sandwich, $18 at Subway. I said, that's no way. I thought my wife was making it up. I said, was it a triple meat sandwich? She said, no, the sandwich didn't have hardly any meat. And and um, can you imagine there's an article about just taking a family of four to McDonald's? That's how we called it in Kentucky. I know some of you said it's McDonald's, but not where I'm from. It's McDonald's. You emphasize the first part. <laughs> and that, that could be $100 and, and take some of these places. So inflation, you didn't factor in big ticket items. You change your spending habits. You got a little bit excited there after retirement. Look on the, you loan money to your kids. You loan money to your kids. Now over here, you spoiled your grandkids. Guilty as charged. You didn't take future tax rates into consideration. Hey, folks, Lane Martins is a master at this. You didn't consider fees. I have nothing to do with that. I can't address that. You got divorced. You took on new debt. I had a lady, Lane, last week. She's buying a brand new boat for cash for $1 million. Now, that has to do with spending, and but sometimes you, you finance it and, and now you're cash flow. You withdraw too much money each year. Or you didn't take in market fluctuations into account. 18 or 14 signs that you're going to run out of money in retirement. What I'm going to show you today is 13 of these 14. I can't do anything about fees because I'm not. I don't charge fees, um, ongoing like an advisor. And uh, but 13 of these 14 risks, we can look at the, remember your GLOC, your GLOC, which stands for your growing line of credit. And I'm going to show you how a line of credit from a reverse mortgage can address 13 of these 14 risks. Grab your pen and paper, as Terrell Owen said, get your popcorn ready. That's <laughs> so you remember the amount of money you get based off age, Home value, expected interest rate, gives you the net benefit amount. Pay off your line of credit, and what do you have left? You've got your growing line of credit left over. So we're going to look at a couple. And we did all of that, and they're going to have a line of credit of $224,000. I think their home at the time was $650,000. I'm going to show you this. But before that, I was on a task force at the American College, and there were seven PhDs and me. And we were up at Harvard and, and, and uh, Boston College, and uh, these brainiacs were just beginning to learn about reverse mortgages, and no one had captured them on the film. 
And so seven of them, seven of them, and I asked them several questions. I said, what surprised you the most as you begin to learn about reverse mortgages? That's what I asked them. Yeah. I want to play what four of them had to say. The smartest people in the room. I want to play what they had to say. And the thing that really surprised me about reverse mortgages is that when you take out a home equity conversion mortgage or reverse mortgage and you don't use it, that the line of credit actually grows. The most surprising element of all of that is the fact that when the uh, credit line is not drawn upon or to the extent that it's not drawn upon, it actually grows. I'm sure the common answer is going to be the line of credit growth. <laughs> and I think, but not just the growth of it, but the growth independent of the home value. What the line of credit does is provide uh, a set of cash that you could hold in reserve until those older years. It's guaranteed to be there, government backing. It's got all these cool things. It's going to continue to grow. It's guaranteed to grow. So it's a, a tremendous risk reduction tool for the out years. And it's that growth along with the tax-free properties and the guarantees to be there that makes that such a, a powerful long-term tool. Lane, I'm going to put that on pause, man. Every time I hear that, my big toe swells up. And I think, man, that is some good stuff right there. Uh, Dr. Tom Davis and all these folks, that just, just brilliant people. And But when you hear that as a, a, a brilliant Mensa AP high school student, what is it that captures your attention when you begin to hear about the reverse mortgage line of credit? And I'm going to, folks, I'm going to go back and finish and I'm going to look at the 14 risk and show you how it applies. But I want to hear from Lane. Well, you know, it, it confirms what I what I know. And it's fun to see the academics um, including that and acknowledging that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's I guess that's my thought is this, it's nice to have people, you know, a lot of to confirm that. You know, the, I know the, the reverse mortgage laws changed, right? Like 2015, there was a significant, some changes. So the way people think of them is is they're they're not even getting the tip of the iceberg of, of what the potential is. And so it's a, it's really a powerful financial tool. It's just like any financial tool, it's got to be used with skill and with care and with purpose. And what is the need? For, for, and it may be used for one person um, very differently than for someone else. And someone needs to get rid of their mortgage payment or someone needs to complete Roth conversions and they need a source for the taxes. I mean, there's, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. And that's where the planning comes in. But anyway, that, those are my thoughts when I look at that video. Sure. And thank you for that, folks. I, I've, I've, I've read the book here and um, I'm rewriting this. Lane, I'm giving you a brand new book here in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, but, but we cover 52 strategies. And so one size doesn't fit all. Matter of fact, Lane, do you know you can't even say that term anymore? They outlawed that term. You can't say. People, one size fits all. And um, now, you know, it says one size fits most. Because <laughs> got sued uh, for saying that, saying that. So, let's, folks, let's go back and, and finish up here. So this line of credit from that short video says, listen, it's a growing line of credit. Non-cancelable, like what happened in 2008 that um, people discover their line of credit could be frozen or canceled or reduced. It's by direction. You take money out, you put money back, but it's not impactful. So there's no mandatory payment. It's insured by the federal government. It doesn't impact provisional income if you take money out and it's not tied to the home's value. Hey, Don, can I set this line of credit up? And you're saying it's growing. What happens if my house goes the other way? Well, then you could end up with a line of credit greater than the value of your house. That's called the nuclear option when you take all the money out. And it's a non-recourse, so there's nothing the lender can do. So every now and again, someone says, Don, um, I've got equity. Uh, and then they said, just kind of to, to show me that, and I said, yes, you do, Mr. and Mrs. Flintstone. You absolutely have equity. But you know, what about equity? Um, you can't spend it. You can't go out and buy a dress. You can't... Um, it won't pay a bill. It won't help your grandchildren. Um, equity won't do any of those things because equity has to be unlocked. And then the person said to me this. They said, well, I can always, I can always access my home's equity. Did you know when COVID hit somewhere around 
April of 2020. Some people didn't know this. April of 2020, that Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and Chase, the nation's four largest banks, all shut down their home equity line of credit program. All of them in 2020. As of four weeks ago, and I checked, Wells Fargo was still shut down. Bank of America is back, City is back, and Chase came back, uh, I think, 2023. Wells Fargo's not. And so someone says, I can always access my home's equity anytime I want through home equity loan, a lot of credit. I said, no, you can't. I said, that, that's dependent on environmental and economic circumstances. And I take people right to the Wells Fargo website. I said, type in line of credit, home equity line of credit. And so... Here are the questions I ask you who are watching. If you had a choice, would you rather your home's equity be liquid or locked? By the way, the right answer is in both. <laughs> would you rather have that liquidity growing or stagnant? Would you rather have it to be non-cancelable or cancelable? If you took money out, would you rather the repayment be voluntary or mandatory, government insured or non-insured? Clearly, the reverse mortgage line of credit what I'm calling here the relock is advantageous because of these five things. It's specifically designed for the retiree. It started in 1961 as a private program, and I said earlier, 1988 came under the auspices of the federal government. So it's not new, dangerous, or spooky. Here's some numbers um, from last year, just to give you kind of some ballpark. And these change every Tuesday, so these are ballpark. So someone at a $600,000 home now at age 65 would have a starting benefit about $178,000. Two hundred forty dollars if you're a higher home, but here's what you want to pay attention to. The unused portion of that, it went from one seventy eight to seven seventy eight. dollars It went from two forty dollars to $1 million. It went from $300,000 to $1.3 million. Why? Because the reverse mortgage, folks, is a growing line of credit. If I stopped right here and I asked the listeners, what would the benefit be for you if you turned your home into a reserve fund that was growing? How would that be helpful to you? I bet you all could jot down three, four, five things. I happen to have 52 and I won't <laughs> cover them today, but you you get the point. You didn't know it was possible here. And Don, that is not based on real estate appreciating, right? That is not has nothing to do with that. Not at all. So I'm going to take a climb. We're going to answer the 14 ways to use this to mitigate those dangers that Yahoo um, had challenged us with. So this client had a reverse mortgage of $224,000. The unused portion, if they don't use it, at 75, it's 351, at 80, 85, it's 550, and 95, it's 861. Now, I can tell I did this chart a while ago because it's growing significantly faster than that today, but you get the point. Whatever the interest rate is and whatever your initial benefit amount is will, will vary and fluctuate. Here's the point. Let's look at this. Now, by the way, there's columns B and C. We're not talking about that. Um, if you choose to partner with our team, we'll walk through. But just to show you, the line of credit can be turned into a monthly payment. So at age 70, Mr. and Mrs. Flintstone's line of credit well, let, let me do this. Remember at age 85, my mom, her dementia came to a point where she needed help. And so she didn't have a home, so this was not a re reality. But in this couple, if they've got 550000 they say, Don, we want to turn this into a monthly payment, column B, a monthly payment that comes to us every month for as long as mama's in the house. How much would that be? This says $4,192. What if we only needed it for five years? By the way, most long-term care plans don't last more than five years. It'd be $10,216. If my mama had that and we were spending $7,000 a month, but we could get $4,000 out of here, we could have kept her in the house significantly longer. I don't want to spoil my thunder, but that's one of the things we'll talk about. So let's look at this. Here's some conversations, 14 of them, Yahoo Finance. You didn't have a long-term care plan, so you ran out of money. It happened to my household. But I said to you, 
look at how this helps you begin to have a different long-term care conversation. At age 85, 90, 95, you can have um, kind of self-insure for long-term care if you have this line of credit. You can co-insure. Maybe you had a policy, but you don't know that it was enough. Um, if you had it up here, Don, I'm, I'm struggling with the premiums because my husband had to retire earlier, but I, I don't want the policy to lapse. See, having this line of credit changes the conversation for insurance. Number two, you underestimated life expectancy. That's a big one. Remember, my daddy's uh, mama's 91, 94, and I was just a family reunion. Aunt Ethel died at 102. Someone says, oh, I'm never going to live that long. That's what Aunt Ethel said. <laughs> Everybody says that. But the question is, but what if you do? What if you do? Would it be okay if you live longer than expected that you had a reserve over here of 900,000, a million, million five, whatever the number? Would that be okay? Would that make a difference for you? You bet. You bet. Because you may spend up all your money in here, but you've got this other reserve fund over here. You didn't plan for high health care costs. I'm I'm not good at going to the doctor, Lane. You know what? And I've got health care. I just hate the deductible. I have a high deductible, and I say, I don't want to pay two thousand dollars. I don't want to pay fifteen hundred. And I almost had to die to get to the doctor. I'm I'm well now, but high health care costs. I'm talking about your copays and your deductible. I'm talking about the client this week that had fourteen thousand dollars in dental work that wasn't covered, and there's vision work, and someone had a hearing aid. But health care costs, um, some of the medicine you're spending out of pocket for some of these medicines are $500,000 a month, and it keeps getting higher. Having a reserve of money helps you not have to spend from your primary assets when you have another source that you can spend from. Number four, you didn't take inflation into consideration. I, I talked about that. I said CNBC, I didn't, CNBC did an article uh, featured me and Dr. Wade Fowl saying, can we use, and I showed him this, and the article said using the reverse mortgage line of credit as an inflation hedge. Yes, especially if you set it up early. What's the optimal time, folks, to set up a reverse mortgage line of credit? Well, the research says at the onset of retirement. Why is that? Because you let the, the miracle of compounding growth take effect. It's like my daughter saying, Daddy, I'm 30 years old. Do you suggest I save $5,000 a year now or $10,000 a year when I'm age 55? Obviously, I would say, honey, sooner you take advantage of compounding interest. You didn't factor in big ticket items. Remember the lady who bought the boat? $1 million. Now, she had money. She had money. And she had $2 million, and she got, and she wanted to take, of the $2 million, she just got a, sold a piece, sold a business. She's going to take half of that, buy a boat. Because she's a marlin fisher. Well, that's great. But if you decide to take a big ticket item and it prematurely cannibalizes your asset, let me go back here. I had a lady up in outside of Chicago Lane, and she took out uh, $452,000, had a million dollars in an IRA account. She took out four fifty two, and she bought her only child a house. He didn't have the wherewithal to uh, buy it and didn't want a mortgage payment. She didn't want a mortgage. So she took out $452,000 out of a million to buy her son a house. Her advisor found out three days later, he, he's miffed, he's distressed. And he says, you know, once you pay taxes on it, that's going to, that may reduce your money down to 300 or, you know, she said, I don't care. That's my son. I love him. She wasn't thinking straight. And they came to us and we did a reverse mortgage, and I said, I've got good news and bad news. I said, I cannot replenish $452,000. I can replenish four hundred thirty-eight. She's going to have a, a tax bill of $14,000, and I've, I've got 56 days to get this money back so taxes don't jump off. We did that. We did that. That's, so a big qualified for the, that's qualified for the 60-day rollover. That's what you yeah. yeah, that's right. Right. And um, so we did that. Big ticket items. You change your spending habits. Oh my gosh, how often do we see that? You got you're retired and every day is a vacation and you live like it. You loan money to your kids. Uh sometimes people say, Don, are kids opposed to reverse mortgages? 
I said, I've had 16,000 consumer-facing engagements. And I've had two children who have been opposed. She said, how do you know? That's a, such a specific number. Because it's so odd and so frightening <laughs> when it happens. i tell you one of the children, Lane, and tell me if I need to go faster because the Kentucky. No, no, you're doing fine. Kentucky and me tell stories. <laughs> but um, two, two kids out of 1,600, 16,000 conversations. This one kid, I'll just call her Dr. G. She had, a, she had her doctorate, Ph.D., and her husband was doc. Uh, I'm sorry, her dad was Dr. G. He was a retired surgeon. And her first year at Harvard, her first year at Harvard, his business suffered a terrible setback. And in the second year, he said, honey, we're not going to be able to pay for you to go to Harvard. Now, he, he's telling me this story. So that's terrible. She had to go to community college or somewhere like I went. They said, no, no, she finished. No, oh, she went on to grad school and got a PhD. She's a doctor. Now, this man is facing foreclosure because his things have gone bad. So he, he's in for, he's in active foreclosure right now. And he starts crying, Lane, at the kitchen table, the dining room table. He starts crying, bawling. And he says, I can't do this reverse mortgage. I've got to leave the home for my daughter. I said, that's great. We, we, we want to leave the home for your daughter, but you're in foreclosure, so you're going to lose the home. And he's crying. He's wailing. He's booing. And I said, listen, I'll call the daughter. Hey, give me a number. I'll call her. She'll understand. So I called her. Dr. G. Dr. G, this is blah, blah, blah. I left you some information. I watched it. I, I understand the reverse mortgage. Oh, good. Your, your dad wanted me to call you. And uh, they're in foreclosure. They're, they've received their 91-day letter. It's actively working its way through the courts. And we can do the reverse mortgage, pay off what they owe and the back bills interest and um, everything will be salvaged. And she says, it's a good program, Mr. Gray's. It would, it would certainly help my parents. Good. Can you call them and tell them that? They're, they're she said, but if you think I'm going to give them my blessing to do this reverse mortgage, you've got another thing coming. And I was, what? A Dr. G? What? And I was stunned. She said, when I was into my first year, uh, I was so embarrassed because I couldn't didn't have money to go back to Harvard, and um, and they didn't have it. I said, but but you finished, right? Yes, but I had to get a job. I had to do this, and I was so embarrassed. And so if my parents have to lose their home and face the embarrassment and shame like I did, so be it. Good day, Mr. Greaves. And she hung up, and I had to go cleanse my phone because uh, I was like, I've never personally ever talked to the devil, but I uh, said, <laughs> I need to take this over to the Methodist Church and get my phone cleansed. <laughs> but that was one of two children. Now, that's that's evil. That's evil. Most children love their parents. But I see a lot of parents who loan their money to kids. And um, and, and I always hear the same story. I Very seldom do I hear a good outcome. Lady loaned $100,000 to her daughter and their son-in-law to buy an organic dry cleaner. They said, Mama, we'll pay you back every month just like a mortgage. Lane, you know what happened. A year or so in, uh, the business wasn't doing like they thought. And next thing you know, mama's house was in foreclosure. So loaning money to your kids can be dangerous if you take it from your nest egg. Yeah. If you have to do it, here's what it says. You've got another source to do those type of things. You spoiled your grandkids, guilty as charged. And uh, I'm going to get my reverse mortgage when my wife turns 62 in a few years. I'm going to build up this line of credit. Because I want to support my grandchildren. I want to spoil them, but I certainly want to support them. You didn't take taxes into consideration. Lane, can you jump in on this? How uh, how important is it when you say people have that factored in future taxation? Why is that important? How does that impact a plan? Yeah, well, most, most Americans have done most of their retirement savings in tax-deferred, you know, qualified accounts, such as 401ks. And they get to, many of them get to close to retirement age and they're realizing, well, we've got a, we've got a significant tax issue here because 100% of that money is going to be treated as ordinary income. Uh, when you take the money out, it's going to have forced distributions with RMDs. And so when we start looking at uh, Roth conversion plan, met, you know, methods of getting that shifted to take off uh, some of the tax rate risk, so, well, where's the money going to come from to pay these taxes, right? 
Well, the taxes are going to be paid one way or another. And so one strategy, um, and it's only one, right, is is this reverse mortgage where we've had clients, you know, a lot of times people think of a reverse mortgage as kind of like this last option for, you know, but we actually have um, high net worth folks, clients of ours, where they have large retirement accounts. They're like, I want to get this converted to the right amount. And when they see that there's a, there's a way to do it through reverse mortgage, it's just, it's a game changer, really. Um, and they can get to a position where their tax rate risk is drastically low, and they can even achieve a 0% tax rate in retirement with proper planning. And it's uh, so, yeah, yeah so it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the strategies to consider, for sure. And people don't think that. And people don't think that. Um, right. This is actually how um, I got introduced to one of your mentors, Ed Slot, as I talked about. Yeah. And I don't cover it here, but um, this reverse of $224,000 was growing. And a client had a million dollars in a qualified plan. And I said, what if we converted? I'm not a financial planner, but what if you converted $100,000 a year? from a qualified plan through a Roth rollover. And as I worked on this together, I said, but you use the reverse mortgage line of credit to pay the taxes yeah. on that. I said, that means 10 years down the road, the one that'd be somewhere about 1.7 million, if it was growing at 8% less or more, depending, versus if you use the asset itself, it'd be $1.3 million. So you were better off. So using the reverse mortgage in this way um, takes taxes into consideration. It's a powerful conversation yeah. to have um, with folks. So number 10, you didn't consider fees. I said, I can't talk about you. You got divorced. I, I teach a whole thing uh, on gray divorce. The number of people that are getting divorced after age 65, after age 85. And what do you do? And that we show you that the reverse mortgage gives you three conversations you can have um, that you normally wouldn't. For those who go to the master class or watch this uh, on my YouTube channel, Ask Don Grace, YouTube front slash Ask Don Grace, um, I do Fred and Wilma Flintstone got a divorce, and I do a quick case study. It's real fun. To um, You took on new debt. Now you got to service that debt. That's going to impact your cash flow. Yeah, well, and you can use this over here. The last two, you withdrew too much money each year, and you didn't take into account market fluctuations. And I tell folks, listen, um, if you're in required minimum distribution, um, limit limit to RMDs. Don't take plus. Dot, I need more. Don't take more. Take the plus from over here. Take the plus from over here. And finally, market fluctuations Sometimes we hear the term sequence risk, which is if you're taking money out of your portfolio securities and the market goes down, which is the couple that started out with a million dollars beginning of 2022, by the end of the year, their fund was at 790 and they believe they had to take out 40K to begin their retirement. Um, if they take out the 40K, it's got to be an impact. And we say to them, do you have... Another source, if you have to retire, of course, add another source. So we can use this reverse mortgage line of credit to um, deal with market fluctuations, the ups and downs of the market, by not cannibalizing or converting assets during the dips, using another source to deal with that. So, folks, here we have 14, 14 ways, 13 of which we answered just saying by setting up a reverse mortgage line of credit, that gave you access to a lot of things. I'm going to go back. Lane in a minute, but some of you watch this say, Don, how do we get in touch with you? Where do we go from here? Because this was, gosh, I talked a lot. Lane, I was going to do 30 minutes, but you're so special and your smile was so stunning. <laughs> Who couldn't do more? Listen, I, I talked about um, housingwealthmasterclass.com. You can go there and see this in full. There's a um, table of contents on the right hand side. I really want to encourage you um, to do that. You can learn about me, my team, and but this is purely education over here, purely education. And if you want to say, Don, how much money can I get from a reverse mortgage? I'm happy to um, provide some things for you. Go to reversemortgageintake.com, reversemortgageintake.com, or 
pause the video right here, and you can call my office, 1-800-762-6315. And, Don, what do you do? I do three things. I do education, uh, like I'm doing here. I do consultation and case design with advisors and their clients. And if you decide to go forward, I do what's called origination. That is, my team, I give leadership to a team about 200. We take you from start to finish. And, um, and this is a Fortune 300 company. So it's no fly by night. It's a name you would have heard. I won't put it on here. And uh, but Lane um, uses uh, my team and I, and I appreciate that. Lane, I'm going to stop there. It's 201 Eastern time, and I talk significantly longer than I wanted. So I hope the algorithms <laughs> <laughs> do what we wanted it to do. Yeah, Don, no, I think you, you, this is great. Uh, you know, you're, you're fun to listen to. You're kind of a... You're just a great teacher. You're gifted. You're humorous. And uh, I want to be more like you someday. So, but, <laughs> but uh, this is good. Um, we, we, uh, you've given the information. Don's book is a great book. Um, if you really want to read more, get into details or just get a, get a quote potentially. But I just want to thank you, Don. Um, excellent. So, thank you, Lane. Yeah. We, we are, you know, we as financial planners, we like to say we have all the tools in the toolbox. The, the reverse mortgage, while we don't originate them, right, we still can use them in our planning. And we know, you know, we have sources or resources like you who can actually facilitate that that part of a, of a financial plan. So, And Lane, I'm your favorite resource. Would you please tell the people that? <laughs> you are my top resource for sure. Uh yeah, so thank you, Don. Um, I think we'll we'll conclude this video, and we'll look forward to future videos and uh, getting into some some good stuff. So thank you, thank you, sir. All right, take care. Bye bye.